I am here with my good friend, core realtor coach, stud agent in San Antonio, Texas, Texas my dear friend, Patrick Conway. What's up, Patrick? Up. Um, we were just talking about the Super Bowl yesterday. We're both uh, huge Bear fans. Chicago's uh, near and dear to our hearts. So we're talking about the Bears' number one draft pick. So we're just having a, a little chit chat. But the we're a little bit away from the Super Bowl, though. It did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit away from the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. But what I wanted to do today, just really quick, I'm doing a 10 part series on our core realtor laws. These are 10 different things to make sure that our realtor partners uh, prospect well and build a great business. And uh, I couldn't think of anyone better to talk about VIPs what they are, how you get them, and um, what you say, what events you do. We're going to give you the whole playbook uh, to create a great VIP list. So I think the first thing we need to do is create the list. So Patrick, you gave me a great tactic called the grocery store test. Could you elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, anybody that's in my life that's really going to influence my business, they have to pass what's called the grocery store test. So if I'm walking down aisle three of the grocery store, you're walking down aisle three, I'm like, Oh, Lubin, Conway, what's up? We know each other. We would recognize each other. We'd stop and say hi. We might know a little bit about each other's lives. So I just call that the grocery store test. So these individuals got to pass that because if you wouldn't stop and say hi to them at the grocery store, they're darn sure not going to influence your business at all. Cool. When you were first getting started, uh, you talked to me about some places that you got the names from. Uh, just share a little bit about where where you get the names from when you're first getting started. Um, you know, how do you build this list? Well, the first thing that I do is I literally will go through uh, my own contacts that I currently have. So I'll go through my literal phone contacts and I'll just kind of theoretically say, okay, do I know this person? Do I not know this person? If you're old school, you go through your Rolodex. If you're new school, you might go through your swipe rights or whatever it might be. But I'm just looking for those individuals because you probably already have a handful of people who are a little bit more influential maybe a little bit more wealthy, maybe that are in the sales world or that understand that kind of business. So I look at who I already know from previous experiences. So when I first started real estate, I came from new home sales. I actually, you know, going to college, I worked at Bennigan's restaurant and one of my all time greatest VIPs that send me a ton of business. We like came up through the ranks at Bennigan's restaurant. If you ever saw the movie waiting, it's exactly like that. But I'm just telling you, it was just whoever I already knew. And then, you know, I, I, moved from Chicago to San Antonio when I was in high school. And I thought that I knew a ton of people. And when I really looked at my list, I probably had like five really influential people. And that was it. And I was like, man, how do I double that really quick? And the easiest way that I doubled that was to go to those five and be like, who else is influential in your life? Can you please introduce me? And if they had somebody that was influential, I would just do a triangle of trust with them. And it was really easy to double up. Outside of that, what I've, what I was told to do was, hey, go to any business networking stuff that you can get your hands on that meets on the regular. So that would look like a rotary. That would look like a chamber of commerce, maybe a B and I group, something like this. And that works pretty good. But what I actually found that works a little bit better for me is joining some organizations that I actually love. So right now, the biggest, best thing I'm doing, I'm huge into pickleball and I'm in two different pickleball leagues. And it just so happens that a little bit older crowd plays pickleball. So a lot of these guys are pretty well established they got some money in the bank. Maybe they're close to retirement age, but they just know a ton of people. It's pretty cool. So I've been finding a lot of people that way. I'm also down here in San Antonio. So the biggest, best group that I'm part of is the San Antonio Chicago Bears Association. So there's 255 people. And because I'm a huge Bears fan, I can show up in my vintage Walter Payton jersey and we just love each other. And the coolest thing about that is I'm the one realtor of that group. Nice. So it's like we have an immediate bond and immediate connection. So we immediately like each other. So that's what we're looking to do is just try to find people with like interest. So start out with what you got, make them introduce you to some people. And then I would recommend joining two organizations, one that's a professional business organization, and then one that is just something you like. Like right. we've got another buddy that's in your neck of the woods right there in North Carolina. And Phil does an unbelievable job at his workout group, F3. I mean, the dude gets like a deal a week, it seems like, from his F3 group, which is his workout group. So just get yeah. involved in something that you like. Yeah, I think the key is um, do things that you like because people can tell when you don't like them or they'll think you're just not um, that engaged or 
that joyous when you're involved. Like yeah, exactly. I remember joining a country club and pretending like I like golf because I thought that's where all the, the rich, influential people hang out and I hate golf. Right. So it was miserable for me. And then I stopped going. I was like, this is a waste of time. So that's a that's a really good thing. What he said there is Chamber of Commerce, Rotary, get involved, um, get involved in some sports leagues. If you like to play sports, um, get involved in some of your favorite teams. If you have favorite teams, you know, if you sing, if you dance, whatever it is, your, your hobby, get involved in that and find like minded people to do things and have connections with. Uh, on things that you like to do. That's really, really good. So now we have a, a VIP list. I think it always has to include our family members. It always has to include our friends. Um, we should be prospecting some business owners, HR professionals, divorce attorneys, financial advisors. How did you first start reaching out to these people to form your list of, hey, I got my sphere of influence VIPs, but now I need some business contacts that can be influential too. Is there anything you did to prospect towards that? Rotary Club was awesome. And anytime I go to a business networking event, I'm trying to be a card collector, not really a card giver. So I try to find those influential people and grab their card because I know that I'll follow up with them. So in the core, we monitor and track everything. And I started a list called a target list. Mm -hmm. So a lot of whales or big hitters are on this list. So I don't have to think about it. And we have each day of the week, we have a segment and group of people that we call. So we're talking about VIPs today. So anyone that's currently on my VIP list, I call them on Mondays, but I'm always trying to backfill or add to my VIP list. So on Fridays, we call for new business partners or new builders. And instead of having to overthink that, I actually keep a target list at all times. So if I'm ever at a networking event or just the other day, I'm hanging out with my financial advisor and he asked me if I knew this guy, Ty Sheehan, who's a big time attorney in town. And I said, man, I know the name. We're kind of similar age. I've heard some other people talk about him. I've literally never met him. So immediately after that lunch, I go and put his name down on the target list. So this Friday, I'll be calling on Ty and I'll be like, oh, Tommy Valenti wanted me to call you. So it's just going to be an, an easy tie-in. Um, <laughs> easy tie-in to tie. <laughs> easy tie-in to tie. I like so it. I think keeping a target list and actually calling them to influence and keep going yeah. and growing your uh, VIP list is huge. Yeah, but as you're saying, it's just like regular calls. On Mondays, I call them and I'm talking to them uh, just about everyday life. I think my magic sauce when it comes to VIPs is I'm pretty transparent about my life and I always share a story about what's going on in my life. So cool. you and me both have twins and we both have another kid. So we got three little kids. So there's some stories to be told all the time. That's right. So I've got twin boys that are five. Uh, one of them is special needs and he is having some trouble with a big speech delay. So he just turned five and he's barely talking, but he just now started saying words. So I'm, I'm like encouraging anytime he says anything, like for example, he learned to say banana. And I went to the grocery store. We had like eight bananas. So that Saturday afternoon, he learned to say banana. He kept going up to the bananas and pointing at it. He's like, banana. So that afternoon, he had eight bananas. Don't feed your kid eight bananas in a two-hour setting or they might, you know, do to themselves everywhere. It was pretty disgusting. <laughs> but the, the dilemma that I'm in this week is that he learned uh, the F word. So my immediate reaction is don't say that. But then also it's like, how can I tell my kid that doesn't say any words not to say anything? So I'm like, <laughs> I can't everything. So I've got this dilemma of do I not have him say something or do I do? And that's my story of the week because it's the most real and raw and thing that I'm dealing with. So all my VIPs will get that story. And then when I'm calling them, I'm asking them about their story. So we're just in cool. a deep relationship, you know? I like that. He must hang around you too much watching Bears games. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're making these calls. I think you should make, like my VIP list is now over a hundred people, um, but you're never going to start there. That's kind of hard to start with. So make it manageable. But I think 15 calls are manageable. I always want to deliver to them why they're on the list. I always want to give them three things I love about them. I always want to ask what's going on in their lives and what I can help them with. And then if appropriate, I always want to ask for some help back, right? So that's kind of my scripts that I go through. What, what do you do when you call these people? You shared a little bit, but- Yeah, and I like sharing my story. And then I'm always taking them through. If I'm ever stuck, I always think about Ford or Frog which is just the acronym to bring up family, occupation, recreation, dreams, goals. These are the topics that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If they bring up something, I also have to remind myself to ask three questions. So something that they bring up, whatever the topic is, I make sure to ask three questions to make sure that I'm taking the time. I'm actually listening. They know that I care about them. So I literally ask three questions. 
So cool. right now, you know, we're so ask more more later. questions and ask deeper questions on each topic, right? Exactly. Exactly. I, I've learned that that um, helps people to understand that you're listening to them, mm -hmm. right? Oh, absolutely. The, with VIPs, I'm always making sure that we're going out on the regular. I do a quarterly VIP party. So if that party is coming up, I'm like, hey, Chad, I got the party. We're going to go out to iFly and pretend like we're skydiving. I can't really skydive because I'm too chicken, but let's go out to iFly. It's going to be two weeks from now. Keep it on your calendar. Let's hang out. So I'm always inviting them to like our quarterly party that might happen every single month. I have a happy hour. So if that monthly happy hour, I'll bring that up. So I'm always inviting them to something. So there's a reason for me to call. So I'm sharing the story. I'm asking about their story. I'm yeah. asking them three questions. I'm always bringing up the next event that's going to be coming up. Cool. Uh, and then we're done with our conversation. And before we're done with the conversation, I literally will ask them uh, for some help. And the way that I ask for help is, oh man, Chad, every time I'm hanging out with you, it's just awesome. Like you make me want to be a better person. Really what I'm focused on right now is just like watching you and Kristen and how you interact and stuff. It just makes me like want that in my life. Like I need you around me more, man. So you're super influential and I think I need your help. I got to ask you for a big favor. The big favor is, can you send me one, just one person that needs help buying or selling a home in the next 45 days? Can I count on you for that? Hey, Chad, when you send them over to me, don't just give them my card and tell them about me, like literally call me and give me their name and number. So I know it's coming from you so I can take excellent care of them. Yeah, I like that. Too many of us think that people know how to refer us. They don't. We have to take that extra step of how they actually refer them. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I heard you say there that I want to make sure that the audience does, uh, does here is you do a monthly happy hour. So mm -hmm. you always have something to invite them to. And then a quarterly VIP event that's more like a party or something themed like an iFly or, a, you know, uh, Spurs game or something like that, right? So if I have 15 people on the list, or in your case, 100 people on the list, I'm doing those things on the regular where they get an invite to that. So my happy hour is the same place, the same time, once a month, everybody gets the invite. Once yep. a quarter, we do something fun. So exactly like what you just said, it might be a nice fancy dinner. Uh, a couple of months ago, we got on a bus and we went up to the hill country and some of the wineries that are around there. And we just did like a wine tasting, which is super fun. Last cool. year, we got on a bus and went out uh, about an hour west of San Antonio and we went out to a place called Uvalde and there's this big ranch and you actually get in an army tank and you can shoot the army tank which is wow. amazing that was super, super awesome fun. cool well maybe someday I'll get those VIP invites so I can come down to Texas and take take you advantage got them all day long. of VIP events all day long. <laughs> so I think the last thing that you want to hit on is a birthday program. We do this and know what to get them through developing relationships with them. But I also have a form called an all about you form. So what is your birthday program and how do you know what to get them? And how do you utilize the all about you form to be in better relationships with, uh, with your VIPs? So the all about you form is key. So it's literally a form that I have them fill out. That's about them. So it's their name, their spouse's name, their birthday, their spouse's birthday, their kids' names, their pets' names, when the kids' birthdays are. Uh, and then more importantly, it's like their favorite things. So what's your favorite store? What's your favorite drink? What's your favorite restaurant? What are your hobbies? And the system that we run is, I think it's the third Friday of every month, I sit down with my assistant and she goes through our VIP list and all the birthdays that are coming up for the following month. So we'll have the the all about you. I mean, this is like a 15 minute meeting. Yeah, we do the same. That's key. Forms. I want to make sure everyone gets that point is be too many people like it's the day of their birthday, then they panic and they don't get anything out. Like you got to plan this the month ahead. So we're working oh, on yeah. our March birthdays right now. Oh yeah. So I've got my assistant will bug me and it's always like the third Friday of the month. She has all the information for the next month. So third Friday of February, we'll be working on March stuff. So she'll bring up all the March birthdays on VIPs along with their all about you form. So I just know the person and then we're looking at the all about you form and I'll tell her about what I want to get and the amount that I want to spend. So cool. we get them a birthday gift that's going to be relational to them uh, or fun or something, some kind of cool experience that we both had, whatever it might be. Awesome. Um, I think that's the things we got to do. We got to create the list. We got to call at least 15 of them every Monday uh, we have to have something to invite them to. So we have a reason to call. Um, we have to do a good job of helping their business and asking for their help back. Uh, we got to know more about them and have an all about you form. 
and we got to have a great birthday program to love on them on their special day. Anything in conclusion that we need to do, Patrick, to be successful on our VIPs? I think most realtors suck at asking. It's almost like they feel like a used car salesman or they just think, oh, everybody knows that's what I want or everybody knows that they would send me some business. But I think if you have some true VIPs in your life, they literally want to help you. But if you don't educate them on how to help you or educate them and ask like, hey, I'm open for business. I need some deals. Uh, so I'm not that I'm annoying, but I think if you do all those things, you're partying with them, you're hanging out with them, you're asking them questions, you're sharing stories, you're deeply connected, you're helping their business in any way that you can, by all means, you've already earned the right to ask. And if you don't ask and remind them almost every single time, you're missing the boat. But if you ask and remind, oh my gosh, I promise you, you'll receive. So I had eight people that accounted for 81 deals last year. Wow. Eight deal, eight, eight people that uh, were 81 deals, right? Crazy. And your average commission on per deal is what? 11. 11. So 11, if we 000. take, yeah, oh my gosh. You said <laughs> 80 deals? Yeah, something, yeah, that's a lot of money. I don't yeah. know what that is. Yeah, that's almost 900 grand, right? Ooh. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have agents that I'm sure watch us that say they don't want to prospect. When they're your favorite people and when you truly care about them and want to help them and you're in deep relationship, it's not prospecting. It's mm -hmm. talking to friends, helping each other out, and um, just having great relationships. And that's how simple the VIP program can. So I hope this uh, added value to your business today. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you need help with this, a uh, couple of ways you can always reach out to me, 312-731-4939. And if you want accountability behind it, Patrick and I are both coaches in the core training. That's a great place to start. Right on, man. Thanks, Thanks for the opportunity to talk with you. Miss you. We're going to hang out soon. For sure, buddy. Thank you.